Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This is Fish Room Vlog number 28. And as you can see, I had a nice pleasant surprise in the fish room this week. Uh, this young pair of angelfish uh, decided to lay a nice big patch of eggs. And I was actually really, like I said, really excited about this because I do want to increase uh, the repertoire of different things that I can add into my Clyde's tanks. And angelfish, you know, they have a nice different shape and these guys have a nice color. So I thought it would be, like I said, a great addition to what I can do. Now, actually, along those lines as well, I think I might have found a good supplier for uh, different oddball sorts of stuff. I've been really looking hard ever since all this nonsense with COVID has started, trying to find uh, different types of things I can get and something that's, like, reliable. So I'm going to try doing a few things with them, uh, get a few fish in, see what, they, what they're like and how hard they are, all that sort of stuff, and hopefully that will all work out. Now... Unfortunately, uh, this young pair uh, did not do a good job on the first time. As with so many fish these days, uh, people tend to separate the eggs from the parents and they tend to not, you know, they lose that ability to take care of them. In this particular case, I don't think that's uh, the problem. I think they just didn't do a good job, or at least the male didn't, because a lot of the eggs started to fungus. This is actually only just a few hours later, at least like later on the day, uh, mid-afternoon maybe, and as you can see, there's an awful lot of white eggs. They do pick at the white eggs and try to get them off. Uh, so I decided to leave them in here. Like this is the first spawn, and we'll see. I uh, thought I'd see how it goes. The next day, uh, the whole rock was completely cleaned off. Uh, there are plecos in here, so that's not actually a big surprise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pair and I'm going to put them up in one of the newer tanks, uh, one of the deeper ones, and I'm going to set it up uh, with a bit more of a chance for them to be successful. There was no plecos, uh, probably a fewer snails, no shrimp, that sort of stuff. And we'll see how they do in their next couple of spawns. So here is a rock the next day and it's, it's clean. There's nothing there at all. They're a nice healthy pair. Uh, they don't beat each other up, so I'm going to see how this goes. But I don't really like separating uh, eggs from parents. I want them to be able to do the whole thing. So hopefully they will, the next spawn or two, but we'll see how that all goes. And if not, I may have to go and look for a completely new pair. Now one of the things I've been doing this week, a lot of, is throwing as many different things, uh, mostly vegetables, into the dehydrator and seeing how it works out. This is probably the one that worked out the best. This is uh, spring mix. Uh, we get it from uh, Costco. It, my wife gets uh, like a massive container of uh, greens and she makes salads out of it. One of the problems is, of course, it's so large that by the time you know she's getting anywhere near the end of it, uh, it starts to get soggy and she doesn't care for it that way. So I took a whole pile of it and I put it in here. And believe it or not, when this was... <laughs> non-dehydrated like when it was uh, first put in it actually you know takes up an awful lot of space in there and it goes down to next to nothing <laughs> it's uh it's quite impressive actually so what i did is i took it all out and then i just ran it through my fingers and pulled out that's the coarse stuff i'm going to just put that into uh, one of the scud uh, cultures and that'll be fine there and it leaves this really nice flaky uh, green and it actually smells nice and like I said, this is something I really like, and I am going to be running some experiments. I'm going to try getting a bunch of baby fish, and I'm going to raise a bunch of them on a lot of the prepared stuff that I've been making lately, so they get a variety of it. And also I'm going to uh, compare that to a bunch that I'm going to raise uh, just with commercial foods and see if there really is a difference, if this um, creates a you know, better nutrition for the fish, you know, all that sort of stuff. So that's another experiment I want to run shortly. This is the one I did that I honestly didn't really care for. This is an entire bag of uh, broccoli, and it's fine, but it gets really, uh, like, it, it really falls apart. And as you can see, all the dehydrated things, they just go down to almost nothing. This is a... Uh, Again, a nice great big bag from Costco, and it goes down, and it all fits in this container. And <clears throat> it doesn't smell as nice as the others. I don't think that really matters too much. But I am going to mix a bunch of stuff together, uh, try out a few things, and see 
uh, what the fish like to eat. So far, they really like the uh, greens, the, the, the lettuce and the spinach and all that sort of stuff, the spring mix. But I want to try out a bunch of different stuff and then again run that experiment once I have you know, all the you know, bits of pieces of bugs all worked out of it. This, I'm not so sure is going to be in it, but then again, uh, the fish may have a different nose than I have, and they might like it. But there is an awful lot of stems in this too, uh, so we'll see how that all goes. One of the things I've been trying out is carrots, and I thought, well, it was, like I said, it was just something I threw in the very first time, and like I, said, I didn't really care for it. And they did sink, which was nice, and then they rehydrate, as you can see, into what almost looks exactly like a carrot. The thing I like about it now is they last forever. It's like a dog chew bone. It just sits there and uh, they chow, chew on it for like almost a week. So anyway, it's something like I said, I'm going to start working on a lot more lately. This is that underground filter I cleaned and I put it back in here and you can just see it's doing a great job. Uh, this tank is awfully bare at the moment, mostly because as I said earlier, I'm trying to get rid of a lot of the duckweed in my fish room and you pretty much have to take everything out of a tank before you can do that. That's why it looks so bare like this. So yeah, it's, uh, like I said, the filter is wonderful, and eventually I think I'll get rid of the duckweed. This tank is the tank I'm going to be using for the filter tests with the ammonium chloride once it comes in. I just pulled everything out of it for the moment just to uh, get to the, to the process where I need to clean it. Obviously, all this has to be stripped down and washed out and get rid of, like, there's still a fair amount of algae in there. Obviously, the filter's going to come out, too, so that still has a lot more prep work to do. Uh, but that's where I'm going to be running all those experiments. This I added uh, mostly because of a way I used to think of guppies, and also the fact that she's ready to have a whole pile of babies. I think by the end of the day, on when I was shooting this, she had dropped about 10 or 15 babies. One of these days, I am going to take the time when I see something like this and sit around and actually, uh, you know, record a guppy giving birth or at least get to see it. Uh, but I was not recording this for that purpose. When I, uh, like, when I first started keeping fish, or actually for actually a fairly length of time into keeping fish, I every now and then I would get kind of sorry for one of these female guppies where they're constantly pursued by the males like this. It just, uh, for some reason, I got in my head, and treat, you know, treating them like humans, and that, you know, this must be really annoying to have to live with constantly, <laughs> day in and day out. But I used to take females like this and separate them out, and believe it or not, in their own aquariums with none of this happening, they just don't do as well. It's almost like they get depressed. So I just threw this in here because she is... Uh, a very healthy guppy has lots of babies and just tends to ignore them <laughs> I mean anyway this is something I want to throw in there so on to the uh, substrate and plant growth experiments uh, everything is doing very well there actually isn't really anything new to report this week uh, there's I mean the plants are all growing I mean you'll see when we get to the next two along the line uh, that they're all doing really well there's a lot more baby guppies, of course, and uh, that's going to change a bit of the chemistry in here, which is fine, because that's a part of the whole process. I did see one uh, baby guppy that I would normally cull, uh, but that's not going to happen here. I don't think it's going to be an issue because, you know, I don't think this is going to run long enough where, uh, depending on the gender of that fish, whether or not that's going to get into the gene pool. Uh, but we'll see how that all goes, too. Now, another thing I was interested in about this is, you see that male? I'll have to get a, want to do the editing, put in a marker on that. That is one of the males from when I had the really colorful ones that were sitting in that one separate tank where the scuds and the shrimp are growing. And I said, wow, that's really cool. And I'm doing, that's why I'm, this started all this changes with foods and stuff. An interesting thing came up about that. Those three males that I put in here he is the only one that's doing well. He's thriving and doing fine. Uh, the other two, uh, one I'm pretty sure is not in there anymore, and the other one I don't know. I haven't seen it in a little while. The thing about uh, growing a, a few fish in isolation like that, they don't have the usual stresses, the competition with siblings, and with all that extra nutrition. Uh, fish that aren't necessarily as hardy as, you know, the general, like these guys here, 
uh, do really well in that situation. But as soon as you put them in, uh, in the general population with other fish, uh, they just can't compete. That particular one is the exception, and I really like that fish, and hopefully I'll get a lot of babies out of it. But again, you got to be careful when you're um, trying to raise fish as on the best of everything. Sometimes you just carry stuff over that not necessarily should. That may sound a little cruel or anything, but uh, it is actually a fact with fish like this. You should let them have this sort of competition so that, you know, the weaker ones don't, you know, get passed on their, their genes to the next generation. This tank here is doing uh, probably better than the other two, but only marginally better than the soil one. And again, like I said, once this progresses a little bit further, I'm going to do the side-by-side -side on them, and we'll see what you think, and whether it is worth doing or not. And as always, if you like the style of video, please like and or subscribe. And always leave me lots of comments, I'm much appreciated on that. And as I said, this tank here is probably the better of them, except when it comes to snails. Uh, the snails uh, just don't thrive in this. I, it's something in the mix that's in there. Uh, the other two tanks, they're perfect fine. Even the higher acidity, the snails do fine. So that is something about this stuff. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.